Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to the Star Wars The Republic Community Panel, hosted by MMORPG.com. My name is Michael Bitten, I'm the Community Manager over at MMOR, MMORPG.com. <laughs> um, we know you guys are itching to ask these guys uh, some great questions about the game. Uh, we're just going to get the ball rolling with uh, one or two questions, and then uh, jump right into the Q&A and a uh, brief introduction. Um, okay, um, let's start with the introduction. Uh, this is uh, James Olin, the game director on Star Wars The Old Republic. James has been with Bioware for a long time, <laughs> going all the way back to the original Baldur's Gate. So, uh, I think the game's in good hands. <laughs> um, next, we have uh, Corey Butler, he's the live producer on the game. Um, this guy needs a little more introduction, but we've got uh, Daniel Erickson, the uh, lead writer on Star Wars The Old Republic, and um, Daniel will absolutely answer all of your questions. Right, Daniel? Uh -huh. If for some reason Daniel is unable or unwilling to answer your questions, he might like aid you by showing you that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have the conductor himself, Stephen Reed, community manager of Star Wars. Um, all right, at this time we'd like to ask you guys if you have questions, please begin lining up at the mic there with uh, Garrett. Um, we'd also like to ask that you please keep your questions short and to the point, uh, and please limit yourself to a single question <laughs> as a courtesy to the fans of uh, being patient with you. Um, Alright, uh, let's get started with the uh, quick question. Um, so, you know, everyone has their own expectations for Star Wars The Republic. What did you guys, uh, what were your expectations when you came onto the project? Uh, let's talk James. Uh, what were my expectations? Yeah, what were your expectations for the project? Where did you go? Sorry about it. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was my first, my first time working on a massive multiplayer player role playing game, so um, I didn't expect it to be quite as fast as the game. So my expectations were, I guess, uh, exceeded. Um, I, I just expected that it was going to be a very challenging game, um, because the virus of the game and all the people, and um, it's such a, the scope of the game, the game that we came up with is, is so big. So. I think he expected it to be easier. <laughs> In the sense of that. Or you want um, Yeah, well, you know, today's my first day of my work. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wait, first day. Yeah, you know, really, I was, you know, been a Star Wars fan my entire life, been a Bioware fan, and I was really excited to be on the project. You know, I couldn't wait to shoot light with my hand and go in the That's the normal, normal day in the office, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from a writing perspective, I really, really thought it was going to be easier. Uh, the complications <laughs> that, uh, that come when you try to do Bioware interactive storytelling, which I've been a designer, I've been a producer, I've seen a lot of different types of games, it's the most complicated design challenge in gaming. And then you want to do it with thousands of people. Uh, yeah, there is a, uh, there is, Without the learning that we had from all the other games, without the tools, without the prize prints, uh, a lot of this I can't imagine ever having been possible. Um, I've only been on the project for almost coming up on a year, so I haven't been there for the entire time. I think my expectations were. I don't know what my expectations were. I mean, I knew the studio was big, I knew the project was going to be huge. Um, I remember famously saying to, well, famously in my own way, um, <laughs> to friends of mine before I came on the project, I was like, yeah, I know the community is big, but you know, it just means that it's, it's you know, if the average community has, say, 1% crazy, then we'll have 1% crazy, it'll just be a large number of people in that 1%. Yeah. I didn't quite realize how big, <laughs> how big that, that will be. Then. <laughs> so, so the scale was the thing that was, uh, was always something that surprised me. Um, I mean, I guess my expectations were that I was going to get to work on uh, 
an amazing and high anticipated product, which is true. And I would work with some of the best engines in, in the industry at Bioware, and that's absolutely true. Um, the crew there is, is really, really, really smart. So you have to be a big game and do much of time. I would love to have it. I am so disappointed in my project. <laughs> <laughs>
find you continue finding mods to include that. So, for example, if you're a Jedi Knight and you find um, you know, a Jedi Knight rope, say about 50, that you really like because of, for example, say only one rope from you know, some movies, and you don't want to get the super armor, Jedi Knight armor, because you, you feel like, ah, that's not my client. What we can do is continue finding kind of mods and mod that kind of Jedi Knight rope, and you can continue adventuring with that kind of as long as you want. Um, so, that's also going to lead to a lot of. Uh, we feel a lot of um, diversity at the very high levels because the players will be able to pick out their favorite um, items that they would look, essentially, and mod that book so that it's actually um, an easier life in the high levels. So, uh, some individual moderations and children are uh, uh, other persons that are still to connect. Pardon? A uh, person with level 15 item can be in an operation and that item is still making him uh, competitive in the operation. Well, if he gets the proper mods for it, which is going to be difficult. The, we, um, well, I should go into too much detail, but we're still, the thing is we're still doing balance like that for the mod system, because it's a pretty complicated system. So, um, in the next couple months before we we'll can mention a few more things about it. So, uh, I think that's all I'm going to say on the mod system. Thank you very much. I was just wondering if there was going to be any kind of tools that's like specialization in Classes, especially there's um, PvP and um, you know, this means you have PvP and just regular um, PvP. Sorry, you need the ability to switch it. Yeah, the question is, can you do that? Yeah, tool specialization. Oh, so you mean um, basically a system where you're able to easily switch up all of your items and abilities? Um, Currently, uh, for ship, we're not going to have that. Um, so you're going to. We have obviously we have a bunch of different specializations. Your class, you have your advanced class, and then with your advanced class, you can specialize into three different, um, essentially trees within that advanced class. Um, though we're trying to make every single specialization viable um, in PvP now, that's actually not possible. Um, but you know, we're going to we're going to try as hard as we can there. So. Some people are going to find, you know, once the game goes live and have one player playing, some players are obviously going to find figure out that some builds are better than others. And eventually we'll probably want to introduce a system like the one you're saying, kind of where you're able to easily, say, switch between your favorite PvE spec and your favorite PvE spec. But we feel that that's not something we need um, for launch, um, so it's not going to be a okay. okay. Hey guys, I want to ask a question that you guys can't answer. I was just curious if you'd be able to talk about it, whether porting the game over the Mac is a definite no, or if sometime that may happen, or if right now it's not going to work. We're going to be a Steve Jobs show. I'm a Mac fan, so I'd love to see if that version of the game. Yeah, there's no, uh, there, are, there are no plans, there is nothing in the works. Who can? <laughs> <laughs> And then there's someone inside Apple who's a big fan of the game and says he's going to try to make sure it works well in the weekend. That's not a guarantee, but there is someone in there. Uh, so at level one, is there a tax? Is there anything that stops you from being on the show? Actually, we're, we're currently um, not at at level one, but you can actually within a few levels, so probably within if you're a fast player within like 30 to 40 minutes, you can get to a level where you can actually um, essentially grab a shuttle to another origin world and eventually with friends. And the thing is, we haven't built um, it's possible, and we've added a little bit of content to the other world, but one of the differences um, between Star Wars Republic and uh, other MMOs is that our origin worlds are very much tailored towards the classic that start there. Um, so it would be because of the bounty hunter, um, the Imperial agent, how to have a story that's very much about their origin there. It doesn't really make sense for the assist to be able to get there and do those quests. So you can join your friend, you can help them out on those quests, you can help them kill stuff and get loot, um, but you're not going to be involved in the story elements there. Except for one single story that we, that we added to the world for that particular instance. Because it's not even the kind of people who think they're going to do that, but if you do decide to do that, you do have one quest specifically for your type of player time. Alright, regarding Alderaan and the conflict of Alderaan, I read that the Republic is back in the Ghana family and the Ghana family. 
what do you have in store to make the email feel like they're not going to inevitably lose that? <laughs> Uh, well, there are some things that there are a few places that you can sort of see the market history. A lot of it is about where you are right now and what's happening in the continent right now. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we're pretty sure that this SIP empire is not going to be here in 3,000 years. Yeah. Uh, so, one of the things that's interesting is watching the amalgamation. So, watching which parts of the SIP are going to end up influencing history, what parts are going to change the politics are going to change different worlds. So for this moment, yeah, the yeah. Alderaan is one of those that you go, you know what, I, I think they're probably going back to the Republic at some point. <laughs> um, in the party system, so the bigger plus, and you have a uh, set of value here and a set of visitor, um, how is the cluster of change for if, it, if it's a bounty hunter specific quest for the Republic? If it's a bounty hunter specific quest? Like, like it's a bounty hunter specific quest, but you were in a party with a certain person. How will that so can you change the. So you can go with them and you can hang out, you can fight, you can help him, you know, do the stuff, you can get experience points as a certain brother, but you, and you can actually watch his story without you guys can see the stuff going about now. So you can actually be there, but you cannot affect his story. You can't um, interact at all. Yeah, no, you can't. Uh, you know, when when Yoda says, "Luke, you must train to be a Jedi," you can't jump in there as on and be like, "Who wants to be a Jedi?" Please. <laughs> <laughs> you win the role. He never gets trained. <laughs> so yeah, there's a ton, a ton of multiplayer content. That's the vast majority of it. But for your class stuff, you can come along, but you can't. You can't mess with it. You can't breach someone's cluster. Thank you. I just want to say a quick question the data and I it. And the question is, uh, is there still plans for the legacy system or is that no longer the No, no, no. Yeah, we've actually, in fact, never announced anything called that. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, other devs may have said things. Yeah, there was a there was a dev who said it actually went to the Yeah, let it go That is the one slip of the entire project that was not James Olman. So <laughs> yeah, no news yet. Uh, before you said that there were 15 five points, uh, how many are going to be aligned uh, with the public and how many are going to be the public? So how many are going to be the 15 five points to be aligned between Imperial and Republic? Well, a lot of them are actually shared. It comes down to about four. This was four percent. Um, yes, yeah, so there's about there's about a dozen. Um, and when we say shared, so with the, the ones that are shared, you have a totally different storyline going into it. Like so everyone, everyone you talk to, all your actual quest content, obviously you're going to get that quest where somebody's trying to get a Sith warrior or a Jedi quest. Uh, but yeah, you end up with the same stuff. Um, and then I don't know how many of them are at the end game. Well, I'll give you the whole edition. I don't know if it's two. And Mr. 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 I don't remember which ones. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, there, there are other ones that may or may not make the cut or might be coming very shortly after. Two plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is, but the smuggler class had, uh, I think, a max of 130 damage within three seconds or something. And that's very relatively low compared to everyone else who has a Does everybody else want me to do what I'm about to do? Yes. yes. We don't comment on leaks. Thank you very much. seen on the side that may exist is probably out of date by now. Yeah, there are also some horrifically funny uh, bugs that popped up in random times for a day. There have been bugs, in fact, for one class, let's say their skills never went up high level. <laughs> so when you're level 40, you're doing the same damage with that one particular power as you were at level 1. These aren't members. 
shedding. Don't get too worried about class bonds because that's something that uh, continues to, it's going to be continuing onwards until we launch and then actually after launch. Um, so, and actually, in, in regards to your smother, um, uh, we actually have to look through where we measure the popularity of different classes and, uh, and then figure out which class is not so popular in terms of uh, you know, what players are dropping it. So, your, the smuggler class was actually one of the classes we identified as meeting some love. So, it went in there and we've given them a lot of love. So, I think uh, uh, you know, for the smuggler fans out there, we're still a new build is going to be uh, more exciting than the previous ones. There's, there's an issue with that we're getting on, like, um, sometimes we get people on forums who will swear up and down that, you know, the class that they're playing or whatever is, is the weakest in the game or whatever else. And we know the truth. Yeah, a class that beat me is OP. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a key thing, and I was excited about it when I joined the project, because having been on our own budget for it could be, you know, a never-ending logo where people just could tell you that, no, I know, I know that my class is the worst in the game. And the good thing is we have amazing metrics and amazing telemetry on uh, and data on this stuff. And Gail loves his numbers. So I can just go to him and go, is this true? And he looks at the numbers and he goes, nope. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the difficult thing for people to you know, deal with there is that you know, the numbers don't lie. So we'll tell you that, hey, the numbers say that, you know, unfortunately, you're, you're incorrect. And then you just have to deal with it in terms of understanding that we're not lying to you. Um, you know, if a class is overpowered, we're going to know about it probably before the people who tend to lurk in the forums and go, no, no, I, no that class, no, my class is totally normal. It's not helping in any way. Um, so we'll be able to ferret those guys out hopefully before they uh, get themselves done. Um, um, hopefully this is something that does come up. It's um, you know, a lot of the hot button topics on the forum right now, which we have to know about the very class classes. And, some people think that they're kind of at a disadvantage for when the rules factor does come out, since they'll only be able to address the rules which that can be more good. Um, but just for instance, for like the Marauder, will, will their DPS skill trees um, perform differently in those instances? Um, so maybe a Carnage Marauder would be better for one, or an Anishin Marauder for the other, to kind of, you know, make that, make that a little bit better to have to do with one DPS. So that, that was like, yeah, I'm not going to say we're going to have to address that way down the road. That was a question about whether or not, if we theoretically in the future have dual specking, <laughs> if the dual specking would be adjusted in the DPS class trees in order to make a straight DPS advanced class usable in multiple situations. <laughs> I, I, I think that one's too, like, that, that's too far down the floor hole for us to, uh, to even be able to talk about. But, like, if, if we get into dual spectrum, we're going to have to have a long and hard look at the whole system. Well, I, mean, if I could change the question a little bit. Will, like, the, the different DPS skill trees be, like, really different from each other in, in how they perform? Right now they are. Right now there's definitely situations that they're better for. But, again, so much change before launch. Okay. <laughs> now it's too low. Look. <laughs> now we got a draw look at it. <laughs> Alright, is romance a problem with the Jedi Knight? <laughs> yeah, so the, um, this is one we addressed really early because, alright, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna play a game that's got choices, those choices actually have to be hard, they have to mean something, and if you're gonna go light side, uh, you have to be tested. The same way, if you're dark side, we tend to put in quests that are really dark side that test people. Like, I know the quests that will actually make people stop and start playing light side. So they go <laughs> and, uh, in the same way on the light side, we have to put things there that were tempting. And we've seen very, very well in the prequels that, uh, you know, you sort of go in cultural cycles with the Jedi, and there are definitely cycles where they are very anti any sort of romantic attachment, and they see it as a weakness. In fact, a huge amount of the Jedi that have fallen have fallen because of this. So in our game, yeah, romance is a slippery slope to the dark side. So you have to decide between 
three different real big holes in our game that make it very interesting. One, the social pressure of your companions, what they're telling you they think is the right thing. Two, the morality system built in the game, which is a light side, dark side, that you might not agree with. And then three, your own ethics and ideas, and how you want to actually act in the game. And uh, yeah, so if you want to be a if you want to be a pure pure Jedi, you're gonna have to get some things up. <laughs> tell us about the uh, racial or bestial um, <laughs> uh, specific abilities uh, we need to play per species and if we're ever going to get any information about I'll tell you this. Uh, I deleted the post from Gail about that very soon. I was going to say, can we talk about this? No. How about we can't talk about the abilities themselves? We can talk about, no. the, abilities themselves. Now, we can talk about the philosophy of time. Them, which is, don't want to uh, they're not going to be impacting which is the best. You know, you, have, you want to get DPS in a PvP, you got to pick a Kubo, because that would be terrible. Um, so we don't, we've made sure to avoid that. So you don't actually have, when you're picking your uh, species, you can really pick your species just because you can have a full species, and you'll still be able to be any class, and you can be a tank or DPS, or you can be a PvE, or you can get rid of operations, it doesn't matter. Really and are we going to hear any information soon about the racial class conflict? Um, yeah, we, uh, we finally finished those fights. Uh, and we have a final list. Uh, and I will keep in mind. Very, very few. <laughs> and uh, and Stephen can give that to you whenever he deems a problem. <laughs> <laughs> You lost. Because it makes me sad, because I've been saying it for the last year. You will be able to be a Sith Pure Blood Inquisitor. Yes. We went the whole way, which means like we took it back to art and they did the slave tattoos and they did the whole thing and it actually looks pretty damn cool coming in there. So uh, it works. Well, I'm to see that. Um, I was kind of curious, I remember the way it's played out, you guys are likely to the static UI, or kind of like order around the meeting. Do you have any plans to like go in the chat and use the way to make the same You can go chat with us, right? You can use the, you can move the uh, chat with us. Actually, you can move the rate. You can move the rate. Well, you can't break it up for us. I mean, there are some A little bit more customization for the UI, but right in the finals, so. Uh, we do have plans for when those get in, um, is the question. Um, so it's, right now we've um, we made sure to build the game so that it's it's balanced for the interface that's going to be shipping with. Uh, we have some customization, it's limited, uh, but it is one of the areas we know fans are very, very excited about. Um, it's one of our, like we have always kind of the top thing we need to deal with, um, and, and that, is, that is one of the top um, issues about it a lot. We know that people um, are very passionate about it. Um, so, don't worry. One more thing about it. Objective PvP. Do you consider it the end game? And is it going to be more than what you want to cards? Do you know what you Objective PvP? Like, perhaps a defining uh, territorial conquest? You know, the PvP? I can't. I don't know. We still can't talk, talk about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, we're, uh, we're not talking about it alone yet, but uh, we will have more information. Did you see the awesome video earlier? Um, yes. Yeah. So there's cool, there's cool stuff on there. Right, hey guys, AWOL from TGN. I had a question regarding a concern that YouTubers have. I want to do a lot of PvP commentary, hot ball commentary, and I have hopes that Swotor will become an eSport possibly if PvP gets to that level. So I'm going to be doing a lot of commentary. My question is, observer modes, 
stuff like that through PVP, how are we going to be able to properly observe the PVP and help all the open world so that we can do decent commentary without having like an extra dead man on the field recording? Would there be like some sort of ghost camera option where we can check stuff out um, in order to do proper commentary, like you get something like StarCraft 2 with like a replay system? What are your guys' ideas on that and what do you have planned uh, as far as that's concerned? Uh, for ship? Uh, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> But however, uh, we're not here, uh, Gabe and Angelo, who's um, the guy who's up for PvP, he's very interested in that kind of stuff. And it is something that, um, especially if PvP is very popular, which I think it's going to be, then yeah, we're going to be expanding on it for sure. And that is one of the things that um, can really make or break the uh, PvP system. So, uh, so you have plans, not, not a fun launch, but you have plans to work on some stuff at a later time? Is that what Oh, we have lots of plans for shit, but we definitely have plans to do Okay, ghost camera please. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Uh, hi guys, uh, at this point we're going to take a tiny break and post some questions to the panel and we'll sort of back to you guys. Um, you guys mentioned the item modification system earlier in game testing. What's some of the most eye-opening feedback you've received in game testing and uh, how you guys uh, acted on it? Actually, I didn't realize how popular that system was until uh, we messed with it. Uh, <laughs> then we got feedback basically uh, very uh, very constant feedback on the mod system. So we actually the latest, um, we've done some changes to simplify it and we went back on those. Um, we kept a lot of the other kind of changes we had to make it more understandable. Um, the reaction to the changes we did to the mod system, we actually took a few steps backwards kind of the feedback we got from both from the internal players. Well, that's it. Uh, Corey, do you, can you speak on how you guys are going to say feedback? Uh, yeah, I think the system is going to be pretty much the same. We're going to continue to test the game and help you test the game. I think that's actually going to be feedback that we're going to do. To us, I know you guys are doing it in the game. I think uh, I think mine's probably got the biggest list for the uh, you're wrong from uh, from from, the, from the feedback and testers. Uh, my job on the project is to defend the integrity of the world, the story, make everything work as well as it can. And so okay, what's my what's my list? Uh, you shouldn't be able to customize your companion characters. Wrong. You shouldn't be able to repeat flash points. Wrong. Um, there was a lot of them that we went in very, very set. Like we erred definitely on the side of like, let's make the world sound and be right and be what it is. The same way we would go into a, you know, any other Bioware game, and very quickly learned uh, that you really got to walk the line between making sure it still makes sense, but giving players tools and customized and the ability to express themselves and do crazy things in game because that's where a huge amount of passion for the LMOs are. Oh, I have that film. Well, this is so awesome. <laughs> I just get to be the one who runs down the car and goes, yeah, they really are very annoying about the guys who have And then I stick my head down as um, uh, wall and go, so, uh, since the pure body is a bit going here, or... Every <laughs> so time I go to a show, I have to make sure that we don't have any of it. So we'll be able to deal with that. All right, cool. Um, obviously, James, you've worked on a lot of the single player RPGs in Bioware, all the game, uh, and then with Dragon Age. Not sure. <laughs> what else right now? But um, what are the, you know, what have been most of the, some of the most satisfying and challenging aspects of that one? Or pillar, you know, the storyline. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, actually, uh, something that's an interesting little tidbit, I guess. Um, I often, you know, when I'm talking to the dog developers, they'll, you know, come up and tell me that I'm crazy for working on a game like Star Wars The Republic because how the hell can you make a game without much story content and that much voiceover? And I just must make the project completely untenable or possible. But in fact, um, out of all the aspects of the project, I would have to say that the story element has gone the smoothest. And I think um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that. 
Uh, we have a lot of experience um, building Torbay's games uh, in Viber. And um, the fact that the pipeline of taking a script and um, giving it to you know, a director and getting the, the, the parts passed and then his voice is recorded, um, that's a very normal process. Um, the biggest challenges on the project have actually been the ones that have been challenging for every online game out there, which is just the fact, the technical challenges of creating um, an engine that can essentially support thousands of players online at the same time um, and not fall down. And so those are, the, uh, those are the biggest challenges we have and the ones that we've been solving over the past year. Uh, well, I have all sorts of challenges with it because James didn't have to deal with them. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of things you can't do in an MMO space that you're used to doing uh, when you're writing an RPG. Uh, I can't trap you. I can't, you know, the whole scene going to happen like, oh, now you're in prison. Well, but I want to raid tonight. No, oh, no, I guess I can't put you in prison. Uh, <laughs> these people are going to destroy this. Yeah, no, I guess I'm not going to do that. We, we really had to rethink the way we did storytelling. And it, came out for the best, because what it made us do is it made us do more approaches that made the player want to do the content instead of trying to force them or, you know, have the random cutscene where somebody comes, even though you killed a thousand people, some random guy hits you in the back of the head and drags you off. Uh, it made us be a lot more honest as writers and a lot more forthcoming. And it made us plan a ton. I don't think I've ever seen a level of documentation like what we have to do to communicate to all the different teams the complexity of what the story is going to have to do. Actually, I think, um, so another um, area that really helped us out on Charles of the Republic was Network Nice. Uh, Network Nice was uh, a game um, that Sir Byler built many years ago. It was really familiar with it. And it was um, also a big one. It was a lot of the same problems uh, because it was uh, the conversations there were in the environment that was multiple players, multiple players. And so we, we applied a lot of the lessons that we learned from the uh, nice to Star Wars Little Republic. And actually, um, another little tip in is we actually use the Never Nice engine to prototype um, a lot of the, uh, um, whoever did the Explorer Star Wars mod conversion for Never Nice, thank you, that was very useful. Uh, or, yeah, just to make things look pretty. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we, built, uh, we built a lot of the, um, the worlds. Um, in fact, chapter one, almost a ton of chapter one was actually playable in Never Nice. Um, the core was ever playable in, uh, in our final engine. Um, so that's why I wasn't worried, man. That was early on, 2007. All right, let's uh, get back to the. Hey, guys. Um, you built a lot of stuff. You developed a lot of stuff for PvE, and you also developed a lot of stuff for PvE. What can the role play community look forward to content wise? Uh, this is not the, story. The largest role playing game in history. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to say that like, I understand where you're coming from, and um, traditionally in MMOs, you know, there are things that developers can do to kind of help the role playing community along. Um, for me, and this is only me speaking personally because I'm not a traditional MMO role player, but the thing I find very exciting about the story is that you do get to role play your choices. Um, in terms of your dark side, light side choices and, and the moral choices that you're presented with, and when you play, you're like, I can't believe you just killed our chief contact on this mission. Thank you very much. <laughs> now what we do, you know? Um, so it, it feels more like a role playing game to me than any other MMO I've previously played. Now that's from the single individual player perspective. You know, that, that's the same thing. I, like, I was really surprised when people started opening up their chat windows and having meta conversations during conversations. It really felt like a pen and paper game. Like we were sitting there and discussing what we were going to talk to the NPC about. It feels more like, let's see, I've been on both sides. And I've definitely been, you know, the MMO role player as well. You see, as a guy, you can tell I'm role playing because I'm walking. <laughs> right? Like, I, I've been that guy. We do have that. <laughs> and uh, the difference is, most of the effort around role playing for us is more of the pen and paper, like, you know, here's how you interact with the story, here's how you actually create group content, and less we're at the rank fair. Which is sort of what the, the MMO, right? We dress up, we have some costumes, and we have some modes that we can sort of uh, make up our own little story. Um, obviously, if there's a demand for that stuff, there are. Damien and I are, I would say, are the big champions of those sorts of things. Yeah. They, they, they come after, let's put you in your own Star Wars movie. Yeah. 
That's not, I mean, no one's, no one's keeping it on it. You know, we're, we're semi aware of certain things that we might need to fix. I remember one of the very first conversations I ever had with the artists when they got their, their, uh, their list of armor sets was why am I making the wedge of dress? <laughs> <laughs> so you can do an operation. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't shoot. <laughs> So I just started getting into MMOs. This is like the main first really one. Um, I started to go through the races to see what was available, and one really stood out that wasn't even in there, and I was wondering if it's going to be available later. What's the deal with bookies? So, uh, you know, we have to make a decision very early on. So, if you've seen the game, it is a fully voiced, uh, interactive... <laughs> yeah, they, they really don't. Like, hundreds of hours where your character is the only one who doesn't talk, and everybody else has to read subtitles for you. And at the end of the day, there is, you know, and I know this is, uh, this has always been the unpopular but true answer for how we approached it. We're not a sandbox game. We're not a game that is, here's all the toys um, that you had as a kid and just play with them however you want. Uh, we are a movie of Star Wars movie. And there's a reason there has never been a single piece of Star Wars fiction, no book, no comic series, anything, that was led up as the main character by one of the freaking races. Christmas special. <laughs> Thank you, for the rule. Thank you for making my point. <laughs> so, for you to really understand everything, you need to have a character you can relate to and you can actually like sort of crawl, crawl in there. Uh, what I've always said is if we ever did, you know, something where we would have like really creepy race, that would be your whole class. That would be your whole story. We would have to give you the entire experience. If we just slapped a Wookiee skin onto your bed at night and never really ignored the fact that you were a Wookiee, <laughs> uh, no, it sounds it sounds fun, but it wouldn't be a good deal. So how about Christmas Carol? Life day. Yeah. Life day. <laughs>
Yeah, essentially. Like, I like to trade model for the shit So you're talking about the black trade network car version of the watching this? Um, so for shit, we're going to have the uh, basic features. Uh, so what, um, <coughs> right now it's, it's, it's very boring. We're actually allowing you access. We have more access points um, for our auction house than uh, other nameless animals out there. So you're going to have to be able to access it at different locations. Um, we're making some changes to it right now, actually. Um, so I can't really go into detail about what will be in for ship or what won't be in because uh, we're working on it. Still, it's a very long um, Actually, our director is the, is, and, and our food combat designer are both giant fans of playing the economic game. So um, we're always online basically figuring out how to break it. And that's what we're doing. And the complainer that it's not uh, the pants right through the online form. So I think it would be, um, it's been steadily improving, and I think for sure uh, you'll like to see it. It's definitely, we know that it's um, a gameplay style that's very important to a lot of different players. So we're not going to in any way undersize. Thank you. Um, we know you guys have been standing for a while, so I'd just like to ask if you could uh, please move, move quickly through the questions so we can get that. Yeah, sure. Is everybody? <laughs> Uh, quick question about Gil. Is there any benefit in joining Gil? Would be good perks or ranks for being in a Gil? Um, so, for launch, um, we're not going to have a uh, you know, Gil plugin. However, that is something that, uh, again, we know that um, Gil's are a big part of the social uh, tools of the game. We know that uh, one, of the, one of the things we're always striving to do is make sure that we have a game it's very sticky to play and want to stick around and play for many months on end. And the best way to do that is to make sure that they have social networks, friends, and guild is one of the, the most powerful tools. So we continue to add to that. However, um, that isn't going to be a feature in first show. Um, but we also work with some of the most uh, popular, like some of the um, biggest guilds, such as the guilds, the, the syndicate guild, and the more famous guilds. Uh, we work directly with them um, in terms of you know, asking what more packages they want to see and making sure that we're that they're going to be happy and that other guilds out there are going to be happy as well. And if I can, just a quick question about uh, character creation. We can talk about that. Um, in, for example, like Dragon Age, there was an option where, since this is being a fully voice game, uh, Dragon Age was able to, when you chose your race and character, you were able to have different voice sets. Um, I did not notice that in, in the uh, Republic. Is that something that's going to change, or is or yeah, that that's, change? that's definitely not something we'll see change. The, uh, the the character voices are 16 of the hardest to find, most amazing actors out there who had to be locked into long-term contracts, and uh, as you might guess, are the biggest chunk of voiceover in the entire game. So re-recording one of them to uh, to to give a secondary option would be insanely cost prohibitive. That translates to everybody needs to buy the game and then we're rubbing in money. <laughs> <laughs> or one guy needs to buy a seven million dollar microtransaction. <laughs> <laughs> that was the confirmation I would have They don't for that. Can I talk now? Yes. <laughs> no. yes. We're gonna just have a discussion. Uh, Alright. Um, Will you guys spend expanding on PvP combat for space? Like, uh, say I have like, a huge deal on the space combat. I uh, send on like, uh, my capital ship, I get a big space campaign, and I want to go and do a PvP combat on the planet or something like that. It's a huge campaign. Or you can do your plans for space combat. I think there's a game on the market for you that's not us. Well, space combat, obviously, um, you know, Star Wars, you have the word star and Star Wars. It's not a space. It's a, it's a big part of it. Um, however, uh, for Star Wars of the Republic, we, we really want to focus on, you know, the heroic um, part of you know, Star Wars. You being a hero and exploring the galaxy. Um, we did add um, a space game to, like, we do have a space game in Star Wars of the Republic right now. Um, I know people hate it when I call it a mini game, but it is more of a it's more of a mini game right now. It's something that um, you can play. Um, you can get plus experience points. You can get some uh, treasure from it. It's uh, it's definitely a fun game, but it's not like a full featured uh, you know, space game where you can play with your friends or you can play with your friends. Now that's something that um, we discuss all the time, and it's something that is definitely high on the list of things that we want to eventually introduce um, into the game. 
But I think once you, once you play Star Wars The Republic and you get your own starship and um, you play this space game, I know some people just I get rid of that rap because it's like, it's a rail shooter, I'm never going to like it. I still think you should give it a chance. It is pretty fun, um, and I think it will definitely uh, hold, you, you know, hold you over until um, something more. Will there be combat with you? Like, can you uh, fight from the combat? combat and oh, combat view. Is it a combat view? Yeah. Um, no, the game right now is not a combat view. You decided to go with um, your ship as the avatar. Um, because it just, it felt a lot better, it played a lot better. Uh, it was more cinematic. Okay, thank you. All right, we've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Hi there. I'm just a follow up on the light side of the question before. Um, besides the things that we mentioned, are there any other impacts that we can discuss of taking a particular path of morality? For example, would your class story change based on your morality? And also, is there um, equivalent items of you state where you saw or neutral? So, the, uh, as far as the class story, it's where are the your class? class story would change based on morality, per se, although it will definitely change radically based on decisions you've made. Uh, you, nobody has sense of alignment in the, uh, in the Star Wars game, as we saw in the prequels. Uh, so, <laughs> nobody's going to say, oh, hey, I see over your head that your dark side, so then this. There are massively, massively uh, different endings and different paths that play. people can go based on the choices they've made, which are usually dark side, light side choices. But if you made that big, nasty, dark side choice, and you've been light side the rest of the time, people are still probably going to call you out on your you know, planet-wide massacre or whatever you did. <laughs> Great. Yeah. How about uh, gray or neutral? <laughs> gray or neutral items. So um, uh, right now we're focused on uh, uh, light side versus dark side. Um, we're not really talking too much about the uh, gray or more neutral side of things. That's something we might give more detail on later on. But Star Wars really is about struggle between light side and dark side, so that's been our primary focus for the light side and dark side. Great, thank you very much. I haven't really been following the core, but I've been watching since 2008. I haven't really heard anybody asking me about this today. And there's two points of crafting and player habit. Are they going to be included in the game? And what, what kind of roles crafting or player has in well, we have the best player in the system you can imagine. You get your own starship. You have a house that you move. That you can go to any planet. Pardon? You just Yes. Yeah, your, your cargo hold is there. All the classes get their different ships. Uh, the crafting system, there's all sorts of great videos and stuff online for our crew skill system, uh, which is deep and complicated. I'm one of them. We have a lot of big crafting fans on the, uh, on the project. Um, but yeah, we don't build don't really have to be a starship. Okay, cool. Thanks. I was wondering, like, in Cooper 2, if you're able to switch your companions to your side of the horse, would you be able to do that in port? Not with every companion. Uh, there are people that, you know, everybody is not... How do I say this? Uh, like, Alright, I'm not going to try to find a non dangerous way to say it's home game. Uh, our companions are not all wishy-washy. You can't just walk up and change their personalities. There are companions that you can affect extremely heavily. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, what are you planning as far as the pacing of the ending and where you want to You mean in terms of pacing new operations? Uh, I mean, like, um, like frequency of um, reattaches, uh, money for graves. So the uh, frequency of how often we're going to add content for level 50 players to start with the Republic. Um, yeah, but we want to have a uh, cadence that, that is. Um, feeding the pipe as much as we can because we're going to have uh, a lot of players at that level and we want those players to continue playing our game. So um, we are already working on that content right now. Um, we're going to try to, I can't really go into exact detail, but I can say that um, aggressive, yes, it's going to be as aggressive as we can make it. It's very much the, the level of game we've got covered. So we're not, when we're adding new content to the game at this point, um, uh, for patches, it's going to be almost entirely focused on the oh yeah, everybody uses the light side, dark side system, uh, and they're, it's a little bit different depending on where you're standing. So obviously, a smuggler doesn't get dark side points it's for getting his romance on. 
Hey guys, Jason, what's up? Uh, James, earlier you commented on that when you go and shoot dark side, you change your uh, character's appearance. Can you elaborate on that a little bit and say whether or not it's the same thing happens when you go and shoot dark side? So, um, uh, it's very much, it's very similar to the system in Star Wars High School Republic, and we kind of had the same discussion that we had way back in 2002 when we were developing the one of the High School Republic, which was, what do we do for those light side characters? And the fact is, nothing happens to them in the movies. They just, you know, you don't actually get, you don't roll wings or something like that, right? <laughs> like that. So, so every idea we came up with just seemed like it wouldn't fit the mythology of Star Wars. So, and then she was like, whatever. Um, Dark side characters will slowly be corrupted and um, you know get the look that you see Palpatine had developed over the course of the movies. Light side characters. Thanks. I can tell you some of the crazy ideas we had. <laughs> we had a, what was our, we had the crazy like uh, you unlock like the wise and old one where you could uh, you could be like lower bed, but then we were like light side made you old. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, that's probably not going to be popular. So we threw that one away too. Great. Thanks. You sure could take green. <laughs> that would have been popular. Uh, I've seen in a lot of MMOs previously. I've played MMOs for the last 10 years, and what I've seen in most of them is that there's a huge problem with both parties. And that their actions won't be interfered with the game players just trying to win the game. How do you plan to address this? Well, we actually have, um, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, we have uh, some uh, programs working on a system to help with. Um, how they impact the chat system. Um, so it was actually something that we, were, we weren't sure um, if we were going to put in for the launch of the game and then uh, the quality of experience. So mm -hmm. yeah, a bunch came in face and told me that we would put that in the game or we would put the architecture in there. So uh, yeah, we're, yeah so we have a lot of people who, we have not a lot, we have some people who don't know it's not being hurt by uh, readers and bull farmers are in some ways. So yeah, if we, if we treat it very seriously. We have something in place and we're probably going to continue to develop things like when the game goes live, we're going to monitor the situation, and uh, if cold farming can be, it starts to become a big issue, um, we'll just assign a lot of uh, programming and design resources to solve it as soon as possible. But we'll probably never give you details about exactly how we're trying to do that, because, you know, then they know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, uh, that's all the time we have.